What is up, everybody? Welcome to Video Game Music Alliance. My name is Stephen Malin, and this is the live composing show, the show where we write music live. Go figure. It's a lot of fun. I love this show, and I was actually talking to a group of our members yesterday. We were having a, a live Q&A session together, and I want to reiterate something that I said to them. I said that this live show, just having a weekly show like this, where you get to write music, has truly been the linchpin of my music business. What I mean by that is it's the one activity that if I don't do anything else throughout the week, believe me, I do plenty else, but if I only do this, it is the one thing that carries forth all of the other aspects of the business. Sample library reviews, custom music for clients, um, marketing, branding. I can chop these up into little clips, into other uh, pieces of content on social. You can use this as email marketing. We can use this um, with my team to launch products and to get the word out about upcoming events. And it, it's just this thing, right? It's this one idea, this one event that every single week by being consistent, it pew, blows up and grows an audience and we get to grow a community together and have fun. It's just wonderful. So, um, yeah, I'm excited about doing more of these. Now I do want to throw another caveat here specifically on this video game music Alliance channel. Um, there are other members in our pro group that have shown much interest in doing live streams too. And so we're now starting to periodically, um, throw to them. And so, we have a couple more people uh, jumping in in the next couple months. I'm really excited about. And recently we've had a couple guys step up and it's just, it's a ton of fun. So I love that we can truly live out the name of being an alliance and, and being friends and supporting each other in our careers. Uh, so today I'm excited because this is a trailer day, a trailer music day. So if you've been watching this show for the last month, um, really the last four or five weeks, I've been working on five trailer tracks and none of them are 100% finished, but they're all in various degrees of finishedness. So for example, uh, one of the tracks today that I'm going to start with called Rise Above, it's probably about 90% ready. And I want to start with that one today and I want to go down the list. I have no idea how many tracks we'll get to today. Uh, the goal is at least two, but maybe three. Um, but if Rise Above, the first one is 90% ready, then the next one, Shadow Fall, might be 80% ready. And we're just going to go to the list and see what happens. Uh, these are in two very different types of styles. I'm trying to hit the dark, intense, kind of traditional trailer. You could almost think something like The Dark Knight or whatever, just Batman kind of gritty kind of tracks that are much more battle-focused. Uh, usually sci-fi based as kind of my style orchestrally. And if we take that style, the opposite would be more of the family friendly adventure. Think Pixar, think Disney. And these are much more uplifting tracks. They still start small and they grow big over time, but ultimately um, two very different types of contexts. And, and you might be wondering, what does this have to do with video games? Well, in the video game world, these same pieces of music are licensed for movie trailers, for ad campaigns, for, for TV commercials, and video game trailers. Uh, it's all the same source. So if this is something that's interesting to you, I hope that showing, breaking down my process for you guys this month has been helpful. Uh, and just kind of give you another income stream, another thing to shoot for. So if you're not going to write video game music pack type music, this is just another way to get into the licensing scene. Uh, using your skill sets. Uh, it's a slightly different skill set than music packs because we're not creating loops here. We're creating a full story track, three minutes in length. It has a big arc. It's a big story co telling component. Uh, it's very specific, very clear structure. It's a three act structure, breaks in between the structure, right? So there's, there's a whole model here. And we talked about that in the first trailer video. If you want to go back and watch that, I actually have a, a really nifty chart that you can look at. It breaks down almost by the second, the percentage of at what point you should shift to another act, what uh, intensity level it should have at each of the acts as you grow the track. And so that's my goal today. Uh, this is going to be a much more casual hangout type of session today. 
Um, there's nothing in particular I, I have planned to show you other than, you know, this is what I was going to work on today anyway. So I hope that this can kind of be a fly on the wall kind of experience, pulling back the curtain, showing you inside my Cubase session and just showing you realistically how I work through this. Now, the filter that I'm going to walk through this today, um, I'm currently working with a mentor who is a trailer music expert, uh, someone who has landed more trailers than anyone else I've ever met. Um, he is one of the best in the world at this. And so I'm, I'm actively working with him to get my music up to that level and to really hit it out of the park. Um, and it's really cool. I have, have some opportunities with a couple of trailer companies. Um, and they're basically waiting on my music. So as long as I can finish these and get these, um, they will be presented for trailers. Whether they land or not is a completely different story, but at least the opportunity is here, and I'm very excited about that. So I'm really trying to take it seriously. And that's why you might notice that in previous streams, I have a tendency to write one piece of music in a stream, maybe two, but you might be noticing that I'm taking a whole lot more effort and time on these tracks because they're just they're just bigger. They're, they're more challenging. I've spent a good three or four days at least on each of these tracks. Um, so it's just, it's a whole different level of production quality that's needed for this type of music. It's much more intense. So with all that said, I do have some direct feedback from my mentor and this is very helpful feedback and it's going to help steer the direction today. So first thing I want to do, um, let's say hi to people and then we'll play some music. Yeah. So howdy, howdy folks. We got Ethan, Jordan, Jew, Marie, Sarah. Hello, Matt. Who else is in this chat today? We got Toe Gap. What's up, David? Hello, friends. Friends all over the place. David. I think I already said David, but hi, hi again, David. And I have two questions for you guys. And Micah, what's up? I have two questions for you. I posted them at the top. What's your number one struggle for finishing a piece of music? For finishing a music track? That's kind of what we're talking about today. Because these are all in various degrees of completion. But roughly, I'd say the first three tracks today are all like 90%, 80%, somewhere around there. This is probably the hardest part of our jobs is to actually put a period. <laughs> it's to finish the freaking thing, right? To call it done. So what's your number one struggle with that? And then the other question, which is just more fun. I'm playing Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, as I'm sure many of you are. I'd love to know. <laughs> Jordan says, I haven't built an airplane yet. Something to try later. Oh my gosh. I'm not kidding. Uh, twice now. I've only played for about 15 hours this last week, which is a lot. That's that's like way more than I'm used to playing games. Uh, but I love this Zelda game. And twice, twice I've had to build an airplane. I never knew, I didn't know how to solve the puzzle. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do? But I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to look up the answers. I finally had to look up the answers for one of them. And it's just funny because in two different, very different circumstances, the only solution was to build an airplane. So if you get stuck in the game, that's the answer. Build an airplane. <laughs> it's ridiculous. This whole game is ridiculous. Anyway, um, here's what I want to do first. Uh, so we're, we're on the first track today. This is called Rise Above. I had just finished this yesterday. Like I said, it's about 90%. Let's listen to it first. It is a three minute track, so you gotta kind of buckle up for a minute. And I want you to listen out for a couple of things. First, I want you to listen to the size, meaning how small does it start? How big does it get? And I have markers, which are in gold. So act one, act two, act three. And act four doesn't exactly, doesn't really exist. It's more like the climax of act three, but I like to have a delineation that act four is its own thing because I like to put a space, like an actual bit of silence, usually one measure in between those sections. So here we are, act four, and then some kind of outro, which by the way, I did not label. I should probably label that. The outro is where the title card of the trailer comes in. Um, and the purpose of the space between the sections is for uh, music editors because sometimes, actually most often, if you don't know this, I just learned this, Trailer music is often not used in its entirety. So let's say I finish these five tracks and they all land on a catalog somewhere and someone's shopping for their trailer and they want to use one of my tracks. They're probably not going to use the whole track. They're probably going to go right here and just slice out this 30 second chunk from act 2 B because they really liked that melody, that energy level. 
And then they'll go to somebody else's track and they'll chop out act three. They'll go to somebody else's track and chop out the outro. That's how this works. They actually splice together for their trailer bits and pieces from different trailer tracks. That way it's their own unique thing, but it's still licensed music. So I, this kind of blew my mind when I learned this from my mentor recently. And um, it actually completely changes everything for me because it changes the way that I write my music. What, what that tells me is it's critical. In fact, it's, it's so critical and so essential that if you don't do this, you will never sell anything in the trailer space. You have to have clear breaks, absolute silence between your sections. Otherwise, it's unusable. It's just like using layers in a video game. It's like if, you, if, if someone doesn't like the choir layer in your track, too bad, right? And you didn't provide a stem that didn't have the choir, too bad. They will never use it. They will never buy it. So it's, it's kind of a marketing thing is you need to make sure that your tracks are so clear cut that uh, they, this track, sh every track I write should be usable in chunks like Legos. Like this one Lego brick should be its own thing. It should perfectly work just like this act A should work all on its own. And that's how you have to think about this stuff. And that was one of my biggest pieces of feedback from a mentor recently is I need to make better care that each of my sections is its own unit, so to speak. So anyway, I'll shut up, listen out for some of those things, how it grows over time, listen to the instrumentation, listen to, is there a signature sound in here somewhere that makes it unique? Is it a memorable theme? Is it simple enough to sing? Because the true test is after you listen to it, I really want you to see, can you sing back the main theme? Because if I did that, I did the job well. If you can't sing it back, whether you're a musician or not, it doesn't matter. If it's not stuck in your head, then I didn't do my job. So let's listen and then we'll walk through some revision notes. Here we go. This is Rise Above, work in progress version. Thank you. 
All right, friends, there we go. Rise above. Like I said, it's about 90% there. I'm pretty happy with it for the most part. So again, my main question to you is, can you sing the theme back right now? And I hope so. I hope so. You should be singing in your head. Na, da, 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 na, na, na. Right? Because I hit it over your head a bajillion times. But I tried to do it in a way that it grows over time, right? But never becomes too repetitive. Um, there's, there's a few spots I definitely want to hit on this to, to make it a little bit more interesting. Great suggestion from Onox. Welcome. Uh, it says, I'd say a nice subtle pad or long strings are needed in the first act or the intro. I think that's a great idea. So part of the challenge in all of this <laughs> Toe Gap says, I definitely felt like I was rising above something. I've been singing the melody over and over again. That's awesome. Awesome. And that's what I want. That's, that's exactly the challenge. And actually my first, I don't know, 10 trailer tracks that I tried over the last year. By the way, I, I started getting serious into trailer music about a year ago. So I'm not, I'm still not where I want to be, but that's a good place to be. You have to start somewhere, right? You have to start somewhere. And one of my biggest challenges trying to get into this world is I noticed that my music, my melodies were not simple enough. They were not singable enough. I kept changing it too much, too often. And that's, that's truly the mark of mastery of, of melodic writing is can you write something that's so simple, still interesting and still uh, singable, right? But it has to be simple. That's what it's, all, it's always been about, right? Especially, I mean, trailers are played for tens of millions of people. So it, it has to hit a nerve emotionally, but also be <laughs> simple, <laughs> right? Anyway, um, so that's one of those things. Uh, I like that suggestion, Onox, to maybe add a little bit more subtle pad. So there is a pad, I should specify, in this second half of the intro. It starts here. It's intentionally very light. But it's also just one. So maybe the, the secret sauce here, the fact that you didn't even hear it tells me something. I recently heard, I'm in a Facebook group, by the way. Uh, if you guys want to come join, I think you have to request, but um, it's been very helpful. It's called uh, Trailer Music Support Group <laughs> on Facebook. I'm not a big fan of Facebook in general, but some of their groups are very good, uh, especially this one. And it's it's a group of, I don't know, hundreds, maybe even thousands of trailer composers, and they're constantly tossing ideas back and forth and production questions. Someone recently said that a tried and true um, tip for using synth pads in trailer music is if you can't hear it, get rid of it completely, and there should always be motion. There should always be something changing. And I feel like I did that later in the track with things like these uh, synth arps because I, I have an EQ on these that I'm writing that you can even see it in the automation down here. You can see how it's constantly uh, filtering open up like this. So it feels like motion and it has a delay on it so it's always bouncing. See it. I think that is, is a good example of it. But to your point, I do think, yes, it would be a good idea, perhaps down here in this uh, gravity pad. Let's throw an EQ on there. It already has an EQ. That's good. A really wonky EQ. What was I thinking? Oh, no. Well, whatever. I don't think that was a very effective use of EQ. Uh, let's solo that. Oh yeah, that's gonna make a big difference. So let's start low and we'll just gradually ride it up. Like 
that. Uh, the volume's now way too loud as a result. Uh-oh, we're caught in auto save. There we go. So let's pull this whole thing down. It's the only time I use that pad anyway. I feel like my biggest strength, by the way, in this trailer music thing, my biggest strength is Act 3. I'm, I, I know that. I know that I'm good at making big, loud, over the top, using all the layers. What I struggle with is actually the opposite, is act one. That's my, my biggest weakness because it's, it's so exposed and everything has to be dialed in perfectly because only one or two things can be playing. Maybe a couple more, but layer-wise, it has to be small, but also has to be the essence of what you're gonna play later. It's tricky. It already feels a little bit better because it it, it it like it opens up a little bit. Um, I don't want to put too much in Act One either. So let's let this is how I compare. So if I'm calling this Act Two A, this should be the next level up of intensity. So this, that's a ton of motion because we have a synth, arp. Also have this sustained strings, so I'm wondering again to uh, Onox's suggestion earlier. Perhaps I mean, we have these little shimmers at the beginning, like this. I try to keep them very light, but I'm wondering if and we have a sub hit as well, which you can't see unless I do this, right. In my headphones, it's super boomy, but it's, all, it's very uh, EQ'd to be low end only. So that's like a sub hit, a true sub hit. So in a movie theater, like you feel it versus hearing it. Um, let's experiment. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but whatever, just the tiniest little. I don't love high strings. Maybe, maybe save it for here. That's a strings and winds patch, by the way. How can I make that more interesting? patch so that'd be a cool sound to use in my next trailer because the next one I'm going to do is, is a dark battle one this I am gonna pull back the automation I still want automation but I think keeping it lower for a little bit longer would be good Okay, 
also don't like this uh, symbol plus piano reverse. It goes off. I'm really getting to the weeds now because this is the that, that last 10% is actually the these are the details that matter. I kind of just want like a symbol scratch. Like a larger. Sarah, I'll leave you some advice from one of our members a few months back. He said, just write a stupid song. Write a stupid song. Get it out of your system. You know, it's funny. Right before this, right before this stream, because I knew I had to do this, I wrote a stupid song. I was like, I had this idea of like taking this weird piano the innards of a piano and like writing this riff. I just, I just needed to get this stupid idea out and maybe it'll turn into something or not. But I like give myself 10 minutes to get all that out and then mentally and like I'm now ready to do this, which is a much more serious track. <laughs> And yes, it, to me, it always helps to have a consistent writing time and don't ever expect it to be good. Yeah, just, uh, hey, what's up, Armin? I just put some more reverb on that symbol. I'm over here playing with the mixer right now. All right, so here are some of my notes that I need to adjust for this whole track in general. I feel like it needs fuller percussion. It needs to be a little bit more expansive and grow bigger. And then specifically at the very end, that, that two minutes, 28 seconds and beyond, I feel like it needs to be even bigger. Um, I want to experiment with some white noise rises to give a little bit more connective tissue. Uh, and ultimately, it just needs a more interesting ending, that outro piece. So I think we're close. <laughs> sure that my inversions are always moving up. I think I did this. It's one of those things that I'm trying to get better about doing to never repeat myself twice. <laughs> I 
also what's happening is this ARP does not have an automation on it and it really needs it. So let's do that right now. Just a detail thing. <laughs> ready for the big Na -da -da. attempt to choose inversions that left the melody on top so let me get all this in there some other percussion source here I feel like we need to pull out I don't know uh, probably something in the snare category the kind of thing right now it's all the the big power drums which have nice transients on them but those are the big beats I need something that's going to fill in that the mid to high range. Bye forever, my go. Oh my gosh. So intense. <laughs> wow. Uh, I don't think I'm connected. One sec. This is what happens during a live stream. There's so many USBs being used right now that. Sometimes my keyboard <laughs> just goes dead. I gotta find the plug. Hold up. Ugh. Live stream woes. Okay, but for real, where's my cable? Ah. Don't go anywhere. Talk amongst yourselves. Come on. Where is it? Where's the thing? the heck let's make sure uh <sighs> sounds work what the hell? come on windows one job 
oh, of all the things to not work. That's kind of important. Um, so, how are we going to do this? I'm not playing with big mouse. That's dumb. Hmm. This has never actually happened. Um, I mean, maybe if I kill a webcam for a sec. Well, anyone just joining us? Welcome to the worst moment of the stream. Yeah, I just don't know. So, uh, nope. Okay, nothing. So, hang tight. Technical difficulties. Don't go anywhere.
There we go. Are we working? Yay, we're working. Oh, my jeez. That was a new one. That's never happened before. Leave it to live streaming. All the things that should never happen, happen. Just got to roll with the punches. All right, well, my MIDI keyboard is finally back. Never disconnected before like that. It's all right, we're back. So, and we can talk about Zelda airplanes. That was fun. Uh, so here, I'm just going to call these snares for now. What I'm trying to do is find a sound here in this back half that will help fill in. Zimmer perk will go well here too. I can get some sticks from there. Let's just see what they have. I'm gonna grab snares. It's amazing what a <laughs> an accident e what. <laughs> it's amazing what a scale can do to add like forward motion. Uh oh. Why is there no sound coming from here? It's the plug and not my fault. What the heck? Uh okay. Hrumpf. Oh, 
like those. Something like that would be cool. I'll say sticks. HZ perk. So let's focus on those. Should I handle that triple it? Digga, 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 digga. I think I'll just do triple it here at the end to keep it. Oops, wrong one. Are you familiar with triple it? Yes. Like that. Cool. That's going to work really well. Then. That's going to be nice. Clickety clackety. Schmickety schmackety. Micah, it was really funny. I was just thinking about that. New ways to torture Koroks by strapping them to jetpacks. <laughs> Throwing them on a bonfire. Adds a lot of fun energy. Let's see what that does. Just for fun, let's play around with a different patch.
All right, I think we're make, making good progress. I don't want to stay on this track forever. Maybe this needs a ping, like this. that I don't like this I don't usually do volume automation but I think here it's necessary it has this really fun delay but then it causes all kinds of issues so one second um, where's my volume? Da, 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 na. I don't even know where that is. I guess it would be, uh, like I never do use volume automation. I guess what I'll do is this. Like that. There it is. Okay, cool. That's how I add it. And then put it back to where it was, which was. Come on, auto save. Leave me alone. La da da da. 831. Right there. And let's see if that keeps that delay. <laughs> Synth lead needs 
automation. It's cool and it, it needs to cut through like it is, but it needs to be tamed down a little bit. So chew. Here we go. Without having to bounce the whole audio track and stuff. It's a butt to do, but it needs to happen. Like that. I think it's in the stray light here. So let's. Uh, where's my. Like that. left and then 30 right So here we need some kind of white noise rise. I've never made one before, but I just, I've, I've been hearing that a lot recently and that's a good technique. 
whenever you're doing uplifting tracks, you don't want to throw a horror riser in there. So white noise is a great way, um, supposedly. So let's, would be the quickest way. Uh, probably something like absinthe or um, massive comes to mind because you can just generate noise. What noise? Let's put it right here. So loud. <laughs> All right, so I have to turn off my oscillators and then just turn on white noise. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is probably the world's most complicated way to create white noise, but it's just, it's how I know to do it. I love synthesizers. So I bet that. So let me do a couple things. Let me make sure the attack is. Let's make sure that the release is off. And the sustain, which I think they call decay. Yeah, okay. All the way up. Cool. Solves that problem. So for now, it's going to sound ugly because I'm just going to hold it. So effective. All right, so just gonna bounce it so we can work with the audio. And uh, basically, once I've made this, I can now use the audio forevermore um, for future tracks, which is kind of cool. Make it once, you're done. Uh, so let's play with that audio file. Let's see what we can do with it. All right, here we are, so we'll do some kind of fade in. And I want it to land dead on here. So this is gonna be my white noise riser. I'm wondering if I should do some kind of pitch. Like maybe this is just a two bar or three bar, something like that. so much. So I do want the final amplitude to be way higher. And just kill it. But I'm wondering if I should do some kind of pitch bend as well. Uh, I don't even know the best way to do that. Uh, maybe just do an automated pitch. So over here in my inserts, I'll do a Let's just see what we have in pitch, pitch shift. Maybe use this, see what happens. If we do detune like this, hmm, I guess it would have to be like 100%. No, no, no. Almost doing nothing. Okay, let's try a different plugin. Wow, I don't know how to use any of these. Let me try something different. Um. This is 
dumb. How about this? Hey, uh, just because I don't know how to do it does not mean it, it's dumb. I don't ever play with pitch stuff. So maybe. Where'd it go? Like, why is everything missing? It doesn't make any sense. It's like not even detecting that there's audio there. What? Um, my goal is for it to kind of scoop up. I, mean, I could be real janky. <laughs> you want to see how I'm about to, <laughs> I'm about to solve this? It's going to be absolutely stupid. Let's chop it up into, I don't know, 16th notes. Oh, believe me, there's 500 better ways to do this. I'm sure. Maybe I'll just do less. Maybe I'll do like, let's do quarter notes. What is he doing? Then if this is like the perfect final pitch, maybe we'll just do this. We'll do transpose, negative two, negative four. This can't work, right? There's no way this is gonna work. <laughs> the beauty of music is there are no rules, but there are shortcuts that put you back at the beginning of the track. Airplane is, oh, this is exactly like Zelda. It's exactly like Zelda. It's like, they're, guys, the way that I've been solving puzzles in that game are asinine. Like, I don't, I just don't, I don't think like normal humans. I solve problems in very strange, complicated ways. So, what am I going to do now? We have all these weird pitch shifts. So now I'm going to turn the grid off. Now we're going to do, uh, I'm going to crossfade all of these pitch changes. That's so stupid. This is the worst idea ever. I hope it's amazing. <laughs> I have no idea what's about to happen. You ready for this? Oh Lord, here we go. <laughs> it kind of works. <laughs> Interesting. It's very like pulsated, but. It kind of works. I'll buy it. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. That's, it sounds like salt. <laughs> Now, just for our protection, I'm going to put kind of some limits on the riser. Also, it's producing some strange artifacts. Straight of a shawl shaker. <laughs> well, there you go. Did something fun today. <laughs> hey, it beats any kind of pre recorded riser, right? No one's done that. I think I like, I'm happy with this track now. Double check the end. Of 
course, Toe Gap, and they have a, a child named Paprika. Ah, okay, I like everything but the end. Cool. Let's fix the end. So we don't want to be repetitive of the beginning. It is an octave lower. We need some kind of end, right? Let's do that. If you're wondering what the heck I'm whistling. Just do a reverse piano spiel. Blues, clues, blues, clues. You gotta find the clue you put it in the notebook then what do you do all right <clears throat> i want to hear this in portuguese that sounds hilarious ending on a one chord but I feel like I have to it's like the, the law of happy music uplifting music I feel like this needs a clean break because of the uh, like a pedal change because The uh, piano. And I want to make sure that this is like super accurately placed. Just makes another cut point. Because if the editor only wanted to use this, it should work and not have this lingering. Because they might just want to do this. Is that better? Is that a better ending? It might be. Probably is. That's probably just a better ending to do this. Oh, I'll get rid of this shimmer shimmer. Does that solve the problem? We're just trying to hit the title card. And it ends it right at three. That's fine. I can live with that. I just don't see any purpose in adding additional music if the additional music is exactly a repeat of something we've already heard. That's another thing my mentor said is like, don't ever repeat yourself twice because that's the job of the music editor. They can copy and paste. So don't annoy us with the same music. Cool. 
Let's export this bad boy. Let's listen to it. As it exports, I'll do a, uh, what do you call that? Real-time export. So we can hear it as we go. This is going to be Rise Above version 2 because I've already exported once before. So let's do that. And we'll move on to our next track. So let's enjoy Rise Above version 2. And we'll move on afterwards. See you in a bit. Whoops. Well, on that note, it didn't finish. That's okay, because I heard something I wanted to fix anyway. And now I have no excuse but to fix it. I'm really enjoying the track for sure. Um, over here. <laughs> Uh-oh, my... Oh, come on, Cubase. Be better. Just be better at everything. Hold up. It's stuck. It's like real stuck. Oh, come on. Oh, behave. Please behave. I just, I can't handle Cubase sometimes. It's so good and so bad all at the same time. <sighs> My uh, window is stuck. This thing, this, this thing is stuck. I can't get out of it. Maybe if I export and then cancel. Will that do it? Nope, it just brings the dumb window back. You know, the stuck window. Oh, no, no, not going to happen. Not going to work. We're just going to, we're just not going to work. That's uh, less than desirable. How does it keep finding ways to break? <laughs> I'm stuck on this screen. Oh, my God. Ermager. 
This is the second weird thing in a row. Never happened before. Just don't get it, Windows. Why must you suck so bad? I love Windows. Uh, okay, looks like I'm restarting Cubase again. Yay. friends we're back i don't know what's going on with cubase today it's just yelling at me left and right um but that's neither here nor there i heard at least it, it did stop at an opportune moment for me to correct something i noticed here at the end in this act four ish section there's no support from the low strings i just never bothered doing it so let's look into that real quick this entire end has no low strings which is very odd not intentional, just an oversight. So, and I don't know why, it's funny, I didn't hear it with my headphones on, but as soon as I uh, was listening to my monitors in the studio, it all of a sudden got empty on the low end. It's very strange that, that I would hear that, but I'm glad I did. So let's, I'm gonna take all percussion out. Ugh, this is a tough thing to try to do, but um, let me just, um, here. I want to solo everything but percussion. Cubase, why must you be awful today? There we go. Okay. This is 100% user error. I'm just making fun of Cubase.
simple, but we need that supplement at the bottom, I think. And let me actually go take out, there's too much going on. I'm gonna take out the synth basses just so I can actually hear what the heck I'm doing. <laughs> Notice that that's missing the the triplet in the short. Cool. And this is one of those reasons you should always, always, always listen to your mixes on your monitors if you're using if you're a headphone mixing kind of person, which I am. Always listen to onto monitors first because all of a sudden you can just hear stuff that you wouldn't hear otherwise in a, an actual room. Shum bum bum. Especially here. No longer samey, it's unexpected. I also have a bit of a weird thing happening here with my, my brams. These guys are pretty short. It just creates a stupid sound. Um. End of the world because yum bum 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 dum. Oh, they're out of time. That's not helpful. That's part of what's happening. It's fine. What if I should uh, do a sub hit? Yeah. That's important. Let's get it lined up. Let's put it exactly on three. And we'll move this ever so slightly. So what I was mentioning about the shortness of those brams, they don't exactly line up with the horns, and it makes me wonder if I need to try to use a different one. The 
bram is more of a percussion instrument anyway. Yeah, fun fact, the Bram sound, the brrrr, originated from Hans Zimmer, from Inception. That was the thing that kicked it off. And then right after Inception, there was a very famous movie, um, is it called Gravity? It's the Sandra Bullock movie, and I want to say Stephen Price was the composer, and he's a very sound designy composer, and he also hugely popularized that sound, and he was a big trailer composer, and ever since Inception, he was, he was I think, the first person, Stephen Price, to use the, the brand sound in a trailer. And it just caught on like wildfire. And because Inception was so big and, and Hans Zimmer has a way of shifting all of culture. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if that's the, the truth. That's just that's what I've kind of pieced together, just observing over the years. That there seems to be around that time whatever year that was. I want to say like 2008, something like that, I think is when Inception came out. So I think it was about a 10-year run of every trailer used that. Which is funny because if you even, if you, if you pay attention to where that came from, it was part of the storytelling in the movie Inception, right? Hans Zimmer actually just took the the main song that the, the actors play, the characters in the story play uh, in their headphones, uh, that's supposed to wake them up from the dream within a dream. And all he did was he slowed it down in half every time they go deeper, a dream within a dream within a dream. And to the very end, it was actually just that French song that they were playing, but it was slowed down so much that it, it made the brass sound like, brum, brum. and then Hans Zimmer being Hans Zimmer, he then recorded because he had just done the dark night and all that whole series. He was used to using brass up in this cathedral multi-stories high and it's like this big sound and so he just combined those two sounds really cool really cool and it's just funny how all of that kind of snowballed into what we know as trailer music all right i think this track is done all right give me a few minutes and i'm gonna export this without being live tail there we go I put a little end marker here just to be one a couple seconds later maybe right there okay cool I'm gonna export this uh, I'm very happy with this track now I don't really want a chance maybe it can make it I'm not so hopeful that it's going to make it I can try, guys. I can try. La, da, da, na, na, na. I feel like maybe if I just erase a bunch of crap. That shouldn't be here. That might do the trick. And God, I just have way too many instruments loaded. That's probably not helping the situation. La, da, da, da. Let's just try it. I'll be back in a few minutes no matter what. Don't go anywhere. Let's try this export thing again. Please don't break computer. Yay.
Alright friends, welcome back. I'm gonna have to export that that previous track um, after the stream just for computing resources. And I don't want you guys to have to sit any longer waiting on me. And it, uh, it also reminded me that I need to export this two different versions, the normal full version and also a version without choir because that's another big value add is to provide a version without choir just in case. Uh, a lot of people don't like choir. So people love it. So it's good to have different versions. Uh, okay, so let's move on to the next track. This is called Shadow Fall. You guys heard an early work in progress of this many weeks ago, and it's almost done now. Um, I'll play some bits and pieces, and then we'll jump into it. The main idea, get my notes ready. The main idea is uh, there's a couple energy changes that I should try to make here today. Let's just listen, and we'll go from there. Whoops, my silly violin is on the wrong articulation. Should be on short. There it is, all right, let's do it. I'm gonna change that right now. I wanted to change this earlier. I want it to do a, a sharp seven. Let's make it a little bit more interesting. All right, anyway, back to the show. Makes me also want to add one of those fun piano ditties I just did a bunch of. 
I like that. Uh, I think that's going to work really well, actually. <laughs> you have to pardon me and my creativity here. I'm just like, why waste time? I just I already hear changes that I want. So, uh, I don't know why I knew immediately, but here we are. It's like within three seconds. Ah! Ah! All right, so we're going to reverse. <laughs> I have to reverse that. I, just, I love this. This is something that I've just started doing in my trailer music. And maybe it's a signature sound, maybe it's not. But it's like this idea of, instead of relying on risers, using a reverse piano single note seems to do the trick a lot of the times. Like right here. And I like that a lot, actually. It gives so much more interest to that sharp seven. And the reason I'm doing that is because later in the track, there's a big emphasis on the sharp seven. Yada, yada, like that. I don't know why this, this is my trombone. My trombone right here. Yada. Yeah, I like that. That's really cool. Solution. All right, now back to the actual track at hand here. I'm going to put this at 1.1.1.0. Where were we? I also feel like... Yeah, I'll stop talking. Enjoy the, the song. The, sh the, sh the blah, 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 music. Words are hard today. Cool. So, I think it's very close. 
And I think the, the signature sound for this track is that uh, solo violin. But there's a couple things that I feel need to be addressed. Uh, overall, I'm really happy with it. But a couple things. First is, and this is what my mentor said, that he's, he's just not so sure about two things. He's not sure about the tempo, the overall pace. It seems a little bit too sluggish and like depressing, sad, melancholy, versus like tension, battle kind of track, uh, which might be solved, which is a simple tempo change. I don't know. Let's play with it. And the other thing is this uh, the solo violin line. It's cool, but it's very triadic. It's just three notes. Yum, bum, 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 bum. Rhythmically, it's interesting, but I, th if there's a way I can change it at, to not be a triad, I think would be very helpful. I'm also trying to consider, like, what if I did? I don't know. The whole thing is in harmonic minor. Interesting. fuller version. So maybe if we get the tempo right, that can solve a lot of this. I really liked the faster. That kind of thing. Do we dare go to like 180 or something? Let's just play.
slow nature I really like. I'm having a hard time changing it. I, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I really like it. Um, so perhaps... I like this violin because it's so clean. It's clearly like, it sounds very like produced, but that's the point. And I put a stereo delay on it. But I, I can't keep those three notes. It's not that it's not, it's not that it's too simple. It's just, it's, uh, it's not interesting. solve this. Maybe let's do this. I'm going to keep the old one. I hope. <laughs> I'm going to drag it all down here. Same thing here. So I'm just going to keep those elements. I'm going to get rid of them in hopes of creating a new. Oh, here, let's just hide these tracks for now. Why is that more interesting? Because the title is called Shadow Fall. It needs to go down. Thank you. 
Oh, let's see. I see why it's crackling now. I have too many things loaded. Um, da -da 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 -da. Seems more interesting to me. Yeah, da -da 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 -da. Let's just keep it the same. Da -da 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 -da. But this gives us the opportunity to. Da -da -da. Da -da 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 And then here at the end, we could do maybe like before. Like that. Cool ending. Okay, so here's what we have now. Works. It's way simpler. Well, it's about the same level of simplicity, but it's more interesting. It doesn't have to be the same three notes every time. There's a nice reverb tail. I changed the temperature to 168, so I, I increased it by 4 BPM, and that seems to make a, just enough of a difference. But now I have to move my reverse pianos because they're audio clips. Just a little bit. Uh, actually, let me do this. I have a way better idea. I don't know how many audio clips I even have. It might just be that one. Just in case, I'm going to make sure everything here is musical mode. Just in case. The reason for that is now I don't have to move them. When I change the tempo to 168, they're going to stay exactly where they were, locked in place. I haven't used 
save some space. Hmm. Because I just have so much loaded that there's no real value in keeping it around. Cool. It's going to help a lot. And then down here, I wanted to make some kind of, this has become something I'm, I'm starting to do a lot more, is this going from act two to act three, I really like introducing percussion for one big final hit. Um. Take it again. Totally need a yep. right. We might be able to use the same. something right here.
something like that. Let's get just the percussion together. Have a little meeting. Where are my cymbals and gongs? There they are. I gotta take way better advantage of these guys too. So we need a big gong here, actually. Yep, just trying to get some gongs to get those big downbeats. Dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it, that, that, that. Drip by that. Let's clean these up. them the same pitch. And then, actually before I save that, I'm going to move this down here. I like what we did last time where we had, this was like negative 30. <laughs> Negative 30 panned, and then I'll take all those. Now let's find a another library that can handle that. Probably damage too. Sticks, snares, something like that that can handle this. Um, let's try. Some different patch from damage. Let's find something like maybe even Tycho's. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, we need something with a lot more bite. this Let's put it to the right 30 
close.
I really like what we built in the last track, the uh, the white noise. So why don't we try using that again? I think that was a really cool way to kind of connect these sections. We need a big rise of some sort at the end. So maybe that will work. Maybe it won't, but don't know until you try. Here we go. Cool. Sounds like it worked to me. It's like a symbol almost. All right, I think that track is ready to go. I'll give it one more listen at, you know, off the stream just because of the whole thing. But uh, let's try one one more. Let's take a quick coffee break. I'll be back. Don't go anywhere. I need a break. But we'll, I'll load the next session while we're breaking. Bye.
All right, friends, welcome back. Welcome back. We have about 30 minutes left of the stream. Thanks for being here so far. This has been a really fun day so far, uh, knocking out two tracks so far. So at this point, we're going to shift gears a little bit. There's another track I have called Cataclysm. Um, so I was, as part of being part of two different uh, trailer libraries, I guess you would call it, or trailer houses, part of what they do is they pitch to the biggest movies ever. And part of that is they reach out to their composers and they hire them to write tracks. So I took a swing at a recent major, I can't say what it is, but a major um, trailer. And I did not land it, but I still have this piece of music. Now I've already gone back and I've revised it a little bit. That way, when I say that, it's what you call a custom. So it's a custom track that I wrote to that trailer. But the only problem with that is when you write a custom, you have now used the main themes of that series or that that property, that IP, and you can't really use it anywhere else, right? Uh, oh, I love coffee. I drink lots of coffee. Don't you worry. Uh, <laughs> judging me over here. Uh, you should know that the coffee I drink is very low in caffeine. Uh, and very low in sugar, so because I don't want to be that guy who depends on caffeine or sugar. Anyway, that's beside the point. Uh, so this custom track that I did, like I said, it didn't land, so it now is just kind of sitting there unusable, right? So 
what I'm trying to do is convert this into a more licensable track. So I've already gone back and I've replaced the main themes with something different. But now it's in this really weird state where it really needs to be one thing, but it's kind of two things. So I need to kind of, I need to make some decisions. And you'll hear it when we listen back that it has a lot of stops and starts like you'd expect in a trailer. And that's because I was doing this to footage that was similar. Um, and it had a lot of stops and starts and dialogue and stuff. And, and that's cool with customs, but it then becomes unusable. So what I want to try to do is convert this a little bit more into uh, a traditional trailer track that an editor could use. So what that means is there should only be one clean break between acts, but no other breaks. So let's take a look. Cataclysm. I really, really enjoyed making this one, but I can see how, uh, when I shared it with my mentor, he was, he was pretty clear that as is, this is unusable. It really needs to be one track with limited breaks. So let's take a listen and then we'll do some edits. All right. Oh, thanks so much, Ethan. You're very kind. Um, there's a lot of good ideas in here, but it doesn't feel like one track, and that's the problem. So thank you for your support. I, I appreciate you guys. Um, I know that I've come a long way. Um, I've actually gone back and listened to some of my music like from a year ago, and this is so much better. So I'm, I can see the progress, but I also understand what my mentor is saying, that this is something that... It, it's almost like three separate ideas that are not quite cohesive. Um, particularly the intro. The intro does not sound anything like the rest. So I really need to do some work on combining sections and not letting it die. Because there's some cool moments here where it's like, we get a lot of energy and it just 
stops instead of keep going. Um, so I'm just going to start playing around and see what I can do. But I think in general, it's a cool idea and I don't want to lose it because I spent a lot of time, uh, I spent three days in a row working on this because uh, if you don't know this, in the custom trailer world, you have two to three days tops. That's it. Um, to start to finish, to put the whole thing together. Uh, and then if they don't like it, you know, <laughs> what are you going to do? You know, repurpose it, I hope. And thanks so much, Marie. That's, that's really kind. Uh, I've come a long way. I know that. I think I'm just going to kill this. It's cool, but it just... There's not much purpose to this intro. So let me kind of fill this out. I love this part, though, because this is like the struggle. That's why I called it cataclysm. Ha! Toe gap. That's funny. Uh, I think everyone needs a mentor. I'm serious. I, I think everyone does because it's the only way to get better. There's an old, there's a famous quote I like from Andy Stanley. Um, uh, I'm going to pull it up because I just think it's so good. And I live by this. I put it at the top of the Video Game Music Alliance site. That's why I know, I know where to get it. Um, I want to pull it up because it's just so important. He says... You will never maximize your potential in any area without coaching. It is impossible. You may be good. You may even be better than everyone else. But without outside input, you will never be as good as you could be. We all do better when somebody is watching and evaluating. Woo. That's good. That's good. That's Andy Stanley from a, one of his books called Next Generation Leader. Highly recommend it. Anyway. Very, very good. Isn't that just, that's so good. It's just so true. Even the best of the best, I'm not saying I am, but even the best of the best do better when someone else calls them out and holds them to a higher standard, right? I'm a big believer in coaching. That's why I do coaching, right? It's so important. That's why I need coaching. Anyway, I love this part and I think it's a good time for it. Like... This is cool, we need it, but I don't feel good about this beginning. I like setting the stage. It just, it has no purpose. Can I say that? Because that melodically has nothing to do with any of these ideas. So I kind of have, before I erase that completely, let me just play these out. I have three distinct ideas here. Uh. What did I? So everything's in B minor. Right? But the thing is, I never do that again. The second idea is... Which is more of the sharp seven thing, which I like because later the big theme is. Right, so that needs to stay. And I really like. I think that's like the cool climax and we shouldn't pull that out to the end because it just has like it's the same chord progression but different melody I like that a lot that's just that's part of my style and I think it it has more impact there at the end with all the instruments I wouldn't want to do it sooner so if we were to back this up a little bit um so the strings are going Oh my gosh, this is Gerudo Valley. Oh my gosh. <laughs> On the break, I was just telling Matt, I said, it's inevitable that Zelda always comes out in my music. 
because I was we were humming the last tune and I was like that sounds like Hyrule Castle how funny <laughs> you can't you can't escape it So, we really have three distinct ideas. I'll just pick one. So, it's, it's already been chosen for me that because of the amount of work that I've already put into this. So, it sounds like I just need to stick with the simplicity of. Maybe like, I see what I was doing. I was trying to make it different. Ugh. But it just, it doesn't. That's a little bit closer. Ugh. Urgh, I don't know what to do here. The thing is, okay, as long as I keep using it. Okay, I'm not going to worry about that part, but I am going to just destroy this beginning. It doesn't matter. Kill the vocals. They're canned vocals anyway. They're not original. The phrases I used because I had no time. play triplets in a 82.5 tempo. Triplet, 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 triplet. Metric conversion.
Or, uh, 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 this is not going to fly. I like the, the tempo, but um, this is a hard thing to try to convert a custom into this, but... Why do I even need to have this measure? So we do this. Dun, 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 bum. I mean, it's cool, but it really doesn't serve any purpose. So maybe if I can just get rid of seven to nine, I should really save this before I butcher it too bad. We call it version two <laughs> before I just start deleting stuff. Um, Edit, range, delete. Let's see what happens. So we do this. Yeah. See, that's all I need. Two notes. I like this. Maybe this, I know I'm just fighting with myself today. Maybe this needs to go here. Um, here we go. Ugh. Yeah. The, there's a lot of 80s sense, like the Juno coming back into style. So this is actually very timely. little ping. I also recorded my, my wooden flute. I thought it was a cool effect. Perfect for dialogue. Talk all over this all day, but it gets the point across. And then we end it. Cool. That works.
gonna take my horn off of reverb and put it on a B2 just to get like tons of reverb. Okay, this is where this is where I was reprimanded because this act two, it's cool. It's cool. But it just needs to keep going. There's no reason to stop. Now I can maybe, maybe we can do this like 32 to 30. Eh. Like I really like the whoosh. I think that's cool. And the sub hit. So let's do this. Let's get rid of it. Uh, select range, delete. Okay, now act three, it can't happen yet. It's too soon. It's way too soon for act three. What am I doing? Somewhere in here, I just, I just made a bad decision. Act three isn't supposed to start till one minute, 50 seconds. So what I need to do is add, let's see how much time that is. I need 20 seconds is around. Uh, 135. So it's exactly two, four, six, eight. I need nine measures. I need to add nine measures. So two, four, six, seven, eight, nine measures need to be inserted right here. I'll make sure that they're even. Okay, so range. Hit insert silence. Okay, now if act three is gonna start there, I need to make sure that 41 to 48 are deselected, so like deleted to make space. There we go. And now that's gonna force me to extend all of that. I just need to grab a couple things here. Right. Uh, so let's confirm. And I'm just talking all over the place here. So act three. Did I still mess it up? I still messed it up, guys. What the heck? This is perfect. Act two should be right there. But yeah, I'm just so... I need 15 more seconds of data, so... Fifteen seconds. Yes. So that is how much you need to be inserted. Yeah. Da. There it is. Boom. 150. That's going to save a lot. Okay. So I like this whole ticka ticka boom. Problem is, we're still off. There we go. Now everything is accurately right there on the beat. That's perfect. Okay. Now we need to make sure that this chugga chugga boom makes perfect sense over here. Take a take a one. It's going to land right on the beat there. Like this. Like this. Here we go. Here's like our, our hit.
So that just gives me permission to take this moment and extend it out. <laughs> That's so cool. I mean, I can really expand that, and I think that's going to be the sweet spot. Expanding this here. Just give me a sec. So really, this is just uh, I don't know if I want to go through all this today, but now I know exactly what to work on. Almost like we don't even need that. Yeah, this is just gonna need a lot more work than I have time for today. But you kinda get the idea. I just need to go through here and merge some sections together to where it doesn't stop so much. And that is where I'm going to pause for the day so I can be on time. But thank you guys for being a part of this. We got through two tracks. That's crazy. Not from start to finish, but we got to finish or finalize two tracks, and there's plenty more to go. But I am excited that starting next week, we're going to be back on the, the video game train. Um, there are some new summer releases coming up for various platforms, mainly Switch because I'm a Nintendo fanboy. Uh, but there are some really cool releases coming up soon, and I can't wait to try out some new styles of writing and, and playing around with that. And we have several pro members who are also going to be featured on their own channels, which is going to be tons of fun. So if you're not yet in our Discord, join that. You can always join our wait list right here and get a free guide of the top 25 questions every video game composer asks. It's a little two-pager guide that just gives you like a one-sentence short answer to each of the major questions. 
and obviously you could jump into the wait list and we'll let you know when we're going to jo- when we're going to open the doors again soon. Uh, we have lots of cool events coming up in the summer in particular. Lots of amazing composers coming to chat with us. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Hope you guys have a fabulous rest of your